<laughs> All right, electric start. Right, guys as promised I'm coming to you with an official I don't know why I put it because I'm still gonna be testing this thing but an official review of the Panthera Motorsports uh, electric start for my YZ250 now if you guys haven't paid attention to the other videos you need to go check those out uh, it's in this playlist uh, that you're watching right now I think it's called the Panthera Motorsports e start I don't know anyway I'll put a card up here for it you need to go check that out because it kind of walks you through everything from installing it to the problems that I had to how I fixed those problems and kind of some of the initial tests, uh, riding and stuff like that. I just got done with a great ride out of here at Dry Creek. Uh, I'm going to pop up a couple clips here real fast. <laughs> So you get an idea of what I was riding today, uh, probably 20 miles, 25 miles, something like that. Not a huge day, but all told I have about 10 hours on the e-start now. 10 hours of, I would consider pretty hard riding, not messing around, actual real dirt biking. And that does include the time when I was having issues with it um, initially. Uh, Really, that only happened on one ride. I had issues at first uh, installing it and it not working right there at the shop. But then after I got it working and the uh, stator charging and all that, I took it out and the first real ride, I had a problem and it tried to kill the motor. And anyway, I'm not going to go into all those things right now. But <clears throat> what I do want to talk about is what I think about the e-start. Because I've got a lot of people asking me questions. You guys here on YouTube, people in person, things like that. The overwhelming question is, or I guess sentiment, uh, it's question and sentiment is, well, is it worth the money, first of all? Uh, that would be the question. And then the sentiment is that, well, why don't you just buy a bike with an electric start? Let me address those two situations. First of all, is the kit worth the money? Uh, let's talk about what the money was. So I paid $1,250 for the kit. I pre-ordered it a long time ago. I was one of the first to get one. Uh, that's why I've got, you know, so many views on the videos I have is because I was installing it before most people were. So now the kit is up over, I think it's almost $1,400. It's like $1,399 now, US. So I'm going to talk about it as if I paid $1,400. Let's start with what you get for $1,400 before I go deep into whether I think it's worth it. For $1,400, you get this cover, which is the workhorse of the whole situation. Uh, this is the thing that makes it possible. So you get this really, really nicely machined aluminum cover. Um, there's gears in here, bearings, this starter, a wiring harness, a start button, and a battery box. And yeah, I think that's it. So for $1,400, do I think that's worth it? That's a tough one, honestly. For me, yes, it is worth it. And it goes into the other thing I want to talk about, which is why don't you just buy a bike with an electric start. Can I kick a motorcycle for $1,400? Yeah, a whole bunch of times. Um, but I'm old, I'm 45. I just had a hip replacement not too terribly long ago, about a year ago. And I don't like to kick start my bike that much um, if I don't have to. So there's that. Also in the rocky stuff like I was riding today,
it is so nice to just hit that button when you stall the bike or you make a mistake or whatever. It is so nice just to hit the button and not try to find a place to kick it or roll back down the thing that you just tried to come up or whatever. It is so nice to uh, be able to hit the button. So, I mean, there's a reason that every bike on earth now comes with a button. The effort and the machining and all that that went into building this kit, I do think it's worth $1,400. It's a lot of money. But when you get this thing in your hand and you're looking at it and you see all the high-end machining and the fact that you get 110 watts of lighting power too, not only just do you get an electric start that charges a battery, you get 110 watts of lighting. So you can run like a toaster on the thing. So I do think that it's absolutely worth the $1,400. Now, quick caveat that $1,400 does not include the battery because they can't ship batteries internationally, or at least not the batteries they want to ship, which is the anti-gravity uh, eight cell, I think. It's the 108, I don't know, whatever. It's the one they recommend. So that's another like 160 bucks or 150 bucks, depending on where you buy it. So realistically, this thing is actually, with tax and everything, it's about $1,600, and that, you can definitely go buy a whole motorcycle for that. And now here's where I, this is why I think it's worth it. When you look at the cost of buying a competitive two-stroke with an electric start, you're looking at a KTM, obviously, or a Beta, I guess, or a Sherco, but let's just talk about KTMs, because they're all kind of the same price. If you're gonna buy an electric start two-stroke KTM. If you're going to buy a new one, you're in, you're going to be into it for 10.5 at least. And that's a lot of money. If you buy a used one, if you buy the most you know recent version of the motor, so 17 and up, you're going to probably be seven minimum into the bike. Uh, and then, you know, whatever you got to do to get it ready because it's used, right? Uh, now, if you go backwards to the old style motor, the non-counterbalance motor, you you know you could probably get a a good one for five or six thousand bucks uh with not uh, just a too many miles on it but you know whatever it's a used bike so i look at it this way if you've got a yz250 like i did and you're looking at upgrading like you're looking at getting you know upgrading to a bike with electric start because let's say you're getting older you're getting lazy whatever <laughs> so you want to get electric start so you have a yz250 and let's say it's an 07 like this one or an 09 or whatever or are you gonna 15 you know or 17 they're all the same right <laughs> and you've got everything done to the bike you really like the bike the chassis set up for you the everything is just like you like it right to get into that other bike let's just say you go on the low end and you buy a kind of a haggard beat up ktm for five grand um because that's basically what you're going to get for five thousand bucks from a ktm maybe not too haggard but whatever you know what i mean and obviously there's unicorns out there there's amazing deals and all that stuff but let's just be just across the board basically a five thousand dollar ktm isn't going to be that great so it's going to need some love and it's probably going to have 400 hours on it so to get into that, it's 5,000 bucks. Let's say you want to sell your YZ for 2,500 because it's an older one like this or three grand. Uh, so you sell that. So now you have $3,000 and you got 5,000 bucks, what you need to spend. So you have to take two grand, right? And your $3,000 and you go buy the KTM. And you're buying a used bike that you don't know anything about, right? And I'm not, let's not go into, well, it's my buddy's bike. I just, let's, <laughs> I get it. So you buy the bike and you think, well, so you're, you're, you're $2,000 in, right? And you're like, man, I, I probably ought to service the suspension because who knows when that was done. So that's 500 bucks for front and rear. Uh, and probably ought to put a piston in it. Uh, okay. Unless this is if you're taking it to a shop. Uh, so put a piston in it. That's probably gonna be about 600 bucks. So that's another $1,100. So now you're $3,100 into this thing. So now you feel like it's pretty sound, bike sound, but uh, maybe wheel bearings too, because, eh, you know, or chain sprockets. You get what I'm saying. You could easily be into this used bike for, you know, six, 
six and a half uh, by the time you're done making it so you feel like you're, you know, you feel safe right, taking it a long way from the truck. Or you could have taken $1,600, bought the electric start for your YZ, and gone riding, right? <laughs> you're off and rolling, and you've got the bike, you know the bike, you know everything about it, you know the service history, the maintenance history, everything, and you love the way it works and all the stuff. So for me, that makes this kit completely worth it. It's It makes total sense to, if you were already going to have to pull 35, four grand out of the bank to, you know, plus whatever you sell the bike for to get the, the KTM that you want, well, why not just, you know, you've got this really awesome motorcycle, YZ250s. Everybody knows that they're good. I don't have to go into it. They're amazing motorcycles. The suspension's great. The cha Blah, blah, blah. All that stuff. Why not take that 1600 bucks, buy the e-start kit and the battery, and you're ready to rock and roll. And then you can put a light on it. You can do, <laughs> you can get a microwave to run on it. You can do all these things. So... Yeah, I absolutely 100% think it's worth it. The next kind of question ish thing that gets asked or mentioned is, well, man, didn't that thing have a lot of problems uh, for such an expensive, you know, upgrade you had to do all this work to? If I were not a mechanic and I weren't mechanically inclined, I might be pretty frustrated about that because it would have been really hard to diagnose and really hard to figure out and I probably would have been pretty upset. I I am a mechanic <laughs> and I knew going into it, I knew I was getting one of the very first ones with the charging system on the planet. I don't know how many that were out there, but I was in the first shipment, the very first shipment. And I knew going into that, that I was probably going to have some problems. I knew that there was not, it wasn't going to be just smooth sailing. I hoped that maybe it would be smooth sailing, but I knew realistically there were going to be some issues and I was going to have to deal with them. So I was okay with that. If, if I didn't want to deal with that, I would have waited a year six months, something like that, um, watch videos like mine <laughs> and seen how people, you know, check out how people do things and fix things and whatever. And then I would have made my decision. But at that point I would have had to pay more because I, you know, I, like I said, I pre-ordered it and I saved, you know, 150 bucks or something like that. Who knows what the availability would be? Cause I think these things are pretty popular and I think they're doing pretty well with them as they should, because, it's it's a good part. It's done well. It's, you know, honestly, I'm really happy with it. Now, the owner um, of Panthera and I kind of had a little tiff there. He got pretty upset with me for posting the videos I did about the problems I was having. He kind of accused me of not knowing what I was talking about, and I didn't appreciate that. But I also understand where he's coming from. He's an engineer. He designed this thing. He probably didn't have problems with the ones, you know, that they built. So I'm sure it was a bit of a, you know, it hurt his ego a little bit to see some guy with a YouTube channel that he didn't know kind of give him a hard time. But we came to an agreement. We had talked. We got over that. moved past it. We, you know, whatever. And I think he's happy for the feedback because I was honest, but also the entire time I told, I said to everybody, I like it. And so I like the thing. I really, really like it. If, if you, if my brother, my mom had a YZ250 and was wanting to put an electric start on it, I would say, go for it. I really do think it's awesome. I, it did have some bugs. I got those worked out. I don't know if anybody else is having the same bugs. I've heard of a few other little issues that people have had. I think that's going to go away. They're going to get that sorted out. And the kits are already adapted. One of the things that I did is I put a crankcase breather for the, or a vent, I shouldn't say a crankcase breather, but a vent for the, the starter or for the stator and everything because now it runs in oil. I drilled and tapped my cases because I didn't know there was a plug on the back because I didn't read the instructions all that well. But even if I had, it's a, it's a, that's like a 16th NP, 16th inch NPT 
or something or eighth inch. I don't know, whatever. It's it's a stupid size and thread pitch. So I put a metric one in there. I like where it sits. I like the angle of it better than theirs, all that stuff. And I don't know why they didn't include it. Well, now they are. <laughs> They're including a fitting now for the because they have a hole. There's a hole in the back that's plugged. I don't know why they didn't just send it with the vent and the fitting. Now they are because I think they realize they should. My official review, um, if I'm going to give it stars, let's do a stars. I've never done a starred review. Five stars is the best. Five means it's the absolute best thing since sliced bread and you really can't live without it and you better have it. One star is that thing is a total pile of crap. I'm taking it back off my bike. Um, I'm never going to have it on there again. I would give this... As I got it, four and a half stars. Four and a half stars, 100%. It's not something you can't live without. So that's why it's not going to get five stars because it is just a luxury. It gets way up there because the fit and finish is good. It's tough. It took a big shot. If you guys look right there, um, I know that doesn't look like much, <clears throat> but uh, I, uh, <laughs> I kind of crashed it. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> um, on some rocks and it hit real hard and it totally took the hit no problems um, like I said I've got 10 hours on it I've been beating on it getting it really really hot going fast down roads so I, I think it's good um, by the way though make sure you subscribe to the channel because if anything crops up YouTube is going to be the first to know. Just that's how it's going to work. I'm happy. I'm super happy with this thing, guys. Thank you guys for watching this review. I hope that was informative. Uh, I hope if you have a YZ and you have some money, I hope you buy one. I think it's awesome. I love to see Yamahas competing with KTMs, and I think this is a way that you can do it relatively economically because you can end up with a bike. I have this bike all in. I have like $4,500 into this motorcycle. And I got it for basically free, blown up, and I fixed it all myself and all this stuff. So, yeah, I've, you know, I, it's a special situation. But this channel is all for you guys so that you guys can learn how to work on this stuff and do it yourself, too. So, anyway, I think it's awesome. Guys, I love you. I hope you get out and you spread the gospel of two wheels. And you know what I'm going to say. I desperately hope that what we're doing here at Highland Cycles is inspiring you guys to work on, modify, make better do cool stuff too, and get out and ride your dirt bikes!